Yeah. Yeah. Check. Yeah. Check two.
Procession, procession, please. Ladies and gentlemen, can we please be upstanding as we receive the procession? I beg you to clear the aisle, please, and be upstanding as we receive the procession. As usual, the procession is being led by the principal assistant registrar at Me Units, Mrs. Sadiq O.A.V. And in the procession, we have Dr. Okwe, Dr. Augustine Agu, Professor Ozemena, Professor Yusubus Ezugu, Dr. Obom R.E., Professor E. Forma Okorunkwa, Dr. Julius Agbo, Professor O.C.N.E., Dr. I.C. Okwesili, Professor Nkiruka Azubike, Dr. Uloma Wogu, Professor F.O. Orabweze, Professor Joseph Uduji, Professor E.C. Ejim, Professor O. Okoye, Dr. U. Ilabo Ilobachie, Dr. Isife Chima, Dr. Mrs. Chiemeke, Dr. A.N. Ebusionu, Dr. Ungazi, Dr. E. Joma, Ibe Bulam, Professor E. Foma Ezegui, Dr. Lilian Okwesili, Dr. Nkechi, Dr. E. Joma Fochu, Dr. Nnem Fidelia Ungazi, Professor Uche Nawa, Dr. Oka Fochinere, Professor Gladys Ozo, Dr. C. O. Ogu, Professor C. Dean, Emeritus Professor Rich. Professor Jones N. Wosu, Professor A. U. Dr. B. I. Chiku, Professor A. C. Ubesere, Dr. Odo, Professor Vincent Ononugo, Onodugo, Professor Ebele Ikekwazu, Professor Bon Anye, Professor F. O. Oraboese, Professor Mrs. Chika Onwasigwe, Professor C. I. Udoye, Professor O. A. Okeze, Dr. James Akpe, Dr. Ungazi Aradin, Dr. Chijoko N. Wodo, Dr. Chemeka, Dr. Emenuga Vera, Dr. Duru Augustine, Professor Adese Anyo, Professor Ifoma Enemo, Dr. Uku David, Associate Professor Salomi Ezofo, Professor B.I. Eze, Professor C.U. Eze, Professor E.K. Onyishi, Dr. Inyodo, Dr. Neka Onyejaka, Dr. Rebecca Namani, Professor Bon Anyehe, Professor J.U.J. Onwomeri, Professor A.U. Chinwoba, Deputy Vice Chancellor Enugu Campus and his spouse, the Librarian, Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, and the Vice Chancellor. national anthem for stanza only.
University of Nigeria song. of learning in the University of Nigeria is all sublime. Please permit me to make welcome for the opening prayers, Venerable Emeritus Professor Ernest Onwasigwe. Let us pray. Our most gracious Father, we thank you for yet another day like this, that you have gathered us, gracious Lord, to glorify your name and to share in the testimony of your visitation upon one of us. We thank you, gracious Lord, for your inestimable mercies upon us. Even at this time, gracious Lord, we thank you for your indescribable grace, which is made manifest even at this season. Lord, we pray that you descend in your majesty and abide with us. Direct us in all things. And at the end of, our, of it all, gracious Lord, may we have cause to go glorify your name. This we ask in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please can we be seated. Council member of, members of the University of Nigeria. Principal officers, distinguished academics and professors, members of the fourth estate of the realm, my Lord spiritual and temporal, Royal Highness or Highnesses here present, lions and lionesses, and members of the press. I welcome you humbly to the 201st inaugural lecture of this great institution. I have been forewarned that if I don't be on my best today, I'll be headed back to Nsuka, so I don't want that to happen. Before I officially kickstart this, before I, this, we officially kickstart this event, permit me to introduce to you the members of the high table here. The Grand Commander and the CEO of this great Citadel of Learning is in our midst here. I'm talking about the 15th Vice Chancellor of this great institution. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for <laughs> Professor Irene Zichiku Igwe. He's flanked by the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Professor Johnson Rama. The Provost School of Postgraduate Studies, Professor Obi Njoku. <laughs> Provost College of Medicine, Professor Hygienius is agree. <laughs> the Registrar, Dr. Mrs. Celine Ngozi Nebedum.
the Dean Faculty of Basic Medical Sciences, Professor Ebele Joy Ikekbazu. And I'd like to introduce Pastor Turas here present. I don't know if I'm skipping anyone there. Please help me get their names. Also, the Chairman of Senate Ceremonials, Professor B.C. Wanguma. We have um, Emeritus, Venerable Emeritus Professor N.S. Onwasigwe, a former Provost College of Medicine. And his beautiful wife. You're welcome, Prof. Please hurry up with the names, I beg you. While I wait for the names of the past inaugural lecturers, I would like to recognize the presence of a royal majesty in our midst, Igwe Oniba Chukugu Odenibu, one of Okosioku Ohaza, the local government area of Ebony State. Igwe. I also know I saw the Dean Faculty of, oh, the Dean Student Affairs, Professor Edwin Omeche. You're welcome, Prof. <laughs> Professor Bon Anyehe, past inaugural lecturer. You're welcome, Prof. <laughs> Professor Ifoma Enemo, past inaugural lecturer, also Dean Faculty of Law. Please appreciate her. Professor Florence Orabo is a past inaugural lecturer. One time this, one time that. She's held so many offices in the University of Nigeria. Please appreciate her. <laughs> my list to come, permit me to introduce to you the beautiful wife of my DVC Enugu campus, Dr. Nkiru Wachiku. Very beautiful. <laughs> You're welcome, ma'am. Oh, really? All right, so I have Professor Ifoma and Nemo have said that already. Professor Cyril Dean, past inaugural lecturer, please appreciate them. <laughs> Professor OFN Ozemina, past inaugural lecturer. <laughs> Professor Uchin Nawa, past inaugural lecturer. <laughs> Professor BIS, a past inaugural lecturer. <laughs> Professor Gladys Ozo, past inaugural lecturer. Professor F. E. Ejezia, past inaugural lecturer. <laughs> Professor Emmanuel Obikili, past inaugural I. Uduji, past inaugural lecturer. <laughs> Professor J. C. Eze, Oracle, past inaugural lecturer. You're welcome. So we still have one more list coming. Um, while we're waiting, permit me to introduce to you. Professor OCN, past inaugural lecturer. Professor BC Ezanolwe, past inaugural lecturer. Professor Ifoma Ezegui, past inaugural lecturer. Professor JUJ Omomere, past inaugural lecturer. Ambassador Professor Jones, also past inaugural lecturer. Professor Felix Chukuneke, past inaugural lecturer. Professor Chika Ogorno, past inaugural lecturer. Professor EO Ezani, past inaugural lecturer. Professor C.C. Onyedum, past inaugural lecturer. <laughs> Professor E.C. Ezugu, past inaugural lecturer. And Professor O.C.N. past inaugural lecturer. I have been blessed by God since I was transferred to Enugu campus to serve under good leaders, the past DVC and now the incumbent DVC. Many years ago, before the birth of Christ, there was a city called Babylon and they had a king. The king asked one of his loyal servants to go search for men that are skillful and cunning in knowledge, had no blemish, well favored and skillful in all wisdom, and above all, men who understood science. Amongst the youth found were four distinguished Hebrew children. These men had those qualities, but they had it more than others. Amongst the three was one that was outstanding, and his name was Daniel, according to my story. 
Daniel had the understanding in all visions and dreams. Daniel had the wisdom and understanding in all matters. Daniel was a great man, a ruler over the whole province of Babylon. Daniel is no other person and, has not, and our DVC has depicted the character of Daniel in this story. My boss, the Deputy Vice Chancellor in Inigo Campus, is an academic colossus, a noble leader who leads by example and is a leader with high repute. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Professor Daniel Chuku Wachuku, the 201st inaugural lecturer. Thank you very much, music department. On this note, permit me to hand the microphone over to the chairman, Senate Ceremonials, to continue with this event. Chairman, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Joyce. So, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, guests at the 201st um, inaugural lecture of the University of Nigeria. It's my pleasure on behalf of the Senate Ceremonials Committee of the University of Nigeria to welcome you all most, most warmly to today's inaugural lecture, the 21st um, in the series. I welcome most warmly the Vice Chancellor of the University of Nigeria, the chairman of today's inaugural lecture, chairman of Senate, Professor Charles Riza Chuku Igwe. I welcome the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, and I welcome the Registrar of the University of Nigeria, the Provost of the College of Medicine, the Provost of the College of Postgraduate Studies, all the deans and directors, heads of academic and administrative units, members of the Senate of the University of Nigeria, other distinguished staff of the University of Nigeria, friends and family of the 201st inaugural lecturer, the great lions and lionesses. The topic of today's lecture is the marriage between the cardiovascular system and hibiscus sabdarifa, let no one put asunder. The marriage between the cardiovascular system and hibiscus sabdarifa, let no one put asunder, to be presented by Professor Daniel C. Nwachuku. Uh, Daniel C. Nwachuku is of the um, faculty of the basic medical sciences.
time and solace in football and traveling, adding layers to the multifaceted persona, persona, persona of this distinguished academician and community leader. I here present to you the 201st inaugural lecture, lecturer of the University of Nigeria in the person of Professor Daniel Chuku Mwachuku. Please put your hands together as we welcome to the podium Professor Mwachuku. With a standing ovation and a resounding applause, can we make welcome the 201st inaugural lecturer of this great institution, Professor Daniel Wachuku. Thank you. Please sit down. It's okay. The Vice Chancellor, University of Nigeria and Soka, Professor Charles Arise Chuku Iwe FAS. The Deputy Vice Chancellor, Administration. The Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academics. The Registrar of the university, other principal officers of the university, the Provost College of Medicine, the Provost College of Postgraduate Studies, deans of faculty and directors of institute and center, distinguished past inaugural, inaugural lecturers, eminent professors, emeriti, distinguished professors, heads of academic department and administrative unit, all other staff of the University of Nigeria here present, my beloved family members, the good people of Obosi, my lost spiritual and temporal gentlemen of the press, distinguished guests, lions and lionesses, ladies and gentlemen. I am here to present the 201st inaugural lecture of the University of Nigeria, Nsoka, and the topic of my lecture is the marriage between the cardiovascular system and high base called Sardarifa. Let no one put asunder. I will present my lecture using the outline shown. Now, I'm going to be brief here because most, most of this part have already been said. I want to give God the glory and honor and adoration for making this day possible. I am delighted to stand before this distinguished audience of eminent personalities, highly cerebral academics and erudite scholars within and outside University of Nigeria to deliver the 21st 201st inaugural lecture of the university. I thank immensely our Vice Chancellor, Professor Charles Arise Chukwi, for granting his approval for me to deliver this lecture. And the Chairman of Senate Ceremonials, I thank you for assisting me to uh, making sure that I secure these dates. I feel honored that all of you sacrifice your time your resources. Some of you came from Abuja, Lagos, far away, even United States to be here. It's not easy. I feel honored that you sacrifice your time and resources to attend my inaugural lecture. I also thank my friends and well-wishers who are not here physically present, but joined us via Zoom. God bless you all. Inaugural lecture is an opportunity given to scholars in the university to showcase their academic talents and research outputs that made it possible for the university to find them worthy to be elevated to the rank of professors. It is an opportunity to provide it for the university community and outside world, professionals and non-professionals to appreciate the role of academics in nation building through research, 
an important but neglected tool in Nigeria. This lecture promises to be exciting and I urge you to relax and give me your... Just briefly, my dean has already talked about this uh, when he, she read my citation. My primary school and part of my secondary school was done in my town. And part, I finished up in Suleja in Niger State at Federal School of Arts and Science. And I gained admission into University of Lagos, did my BSc, MSc there, and PhD in University of Benin. At Unilag, I was a part-time, I was given a part-time, that's where my teaching job started. I was given a part-time lecturer, inferior, and inferior vena cover. When it returns, it moves to the right ventricle. They move into the left ventricle, and from the left ventricle, it pumps blood into this thick blood vessel called the aorta. The aorta will take the oxygenated blood transport it, both it and nutrients to all parts of the body. Now, the blood vessels, it's shown in the diagram you're seeing. It's the blood vessel that form the circulatory system. The circulatory system consists of two, uh, two types, the pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation. The pulmonary circulation allows for the oxygenation of the blood. It starts when the right ventricle pumps blood into the pulmonary artery. They go to the lungs, pick up oxygen, and return to the left atrium. That's the end. The heart and the lungs are located very close to each other. That's the end of pulmonary circulation. So in essence, pulmonary circulation ensures that we get oxygen that we need. Now, the other one is the systemic circulation which starts from the left ventricle pumping blood into the aorta and from there, the blood is circulated to all parts of the body. Now, that blood, the oxygenated blood, transport both oxygen and nutrients to the tissues. And you can see the site of exchange between the blood and the cells, which we call the capillaries. The, the cells get oxygen and nutrients and in return give carbon dioxide, and waste products, other waste products to the blood, and the cycle continues. Now, we have to understand what marriage is. Marriage, simply put, is the union of two people as partners in a personal relationship. Oxford Dictionary defines marriage as the legally or formally recognized union of two individuals as partners. The Bible, in Genesis 2.24, and I quote, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. That's what marriage is. The cardiovascular system, and indeed our body, can develop a personal relationship or marriage, if you like, with any agent, food, or drink that improves its function. All of us here knows what you eat and your body will accept it and function normally. Today, the cardiovascular system have found a bride and that bride is hibiscus sabdarifa. Now, this is a diagram showing the marriage and it's showing the hibiscus sabdarifa wearing the gown and the heart also and we are urging nobody to put asunder when this lecture finishes. Don't put asunder. Now, the, the, what is hibiscus sabdarifa? It belongs to the family of Mavak. It's a plant that belongs to the family of Mavak, which has about 85 genera with hibiscus having about 300 species. The HS plant originates from diverse regions across Africa, Asia, and India. The earliest recorded history of brewing hibiscus tea was traced to Egypt and Sudan, where it was locally named Kakade. In those countries, they even use it during wedding ceremonies to propose toast. In Nigeria, the calice of hibiscus sabdarifa is used to prepare a popular beverage called zobo in most parts of Nigeria. 
and I believe all of us should drink, will drink Zobo during the course of this lecture. Now, this is the diagram of hibiscus sabdarifa, the calyx of it which is used in preparing Zobo. Now, let's look if they, there are so many uses, there are so many uses of hibiscus sabdarifa. One is it's used in traditional medicine, it's used for culinary purposes, it's used as ornamentals, and it's used in industrial uh, paper production. Let's, well, the traditional medicine is used to treat high blood pressure, liver diseases, anemia, cancer, and fever. The tea is used to treat some respiratory disorders in Egypt, lower body temperature, even treat heart and nervous disorders as well. In China, they use hibiscus sardarifa to treat liver disorders and high blood pressure. It is equally used as a diuretic or choleretic. In Iran and Senegal, they use it as to treat, uh, to treat uh, hypertension. In Nigeria, somewhere in Zaria, it's been recorded that the seeds from this plant, a decoction prepared from the seed is used to induce or enhance milk production, which we call lactation. In cases of women after birth, they are unable to produce uh, breast milk, they will be given a decoction of seeds of hibiscus sardarifa. Or in case of maternal mortality, maybe a, another woman wants to take over the breastfeeding of the, of the child, the person will be given a decoction of these seeds. It's also used for culinary purposes. It's used in making hot and cold beverages, herbal drinks, fermented drinks, wine, most of this wine we, we buy expensive, the jam, jelly, confectionaries, ice cream, chocolate, flavoring agents, puddings, and cake. And presently in USA, um, Britain, and Germany, they use it in industrial production of teas and beverages. These green teas and all those things we buy ex ex very expensive. Most of them are prepared using hibiscus sabdarifa. And countries like China and Indonesia rake billions of dollars from exporting this to United States and Germany. The major bioactive compounds present in hibiscus sabdarifa are anthocyanins, organic acid, flavonoids, and polysaccharides. Now, the less Let's look at cardiovascular diseases. Cardiovascular disease is a general term used for conditions that affect the heart or blood vessels. And the common types include coronary artery disease, which results from poor blood supply to the muscles of the heart. Examples include angina, myocardial infarction, and heart failure. You also have cere cerebrovascular disease, Examples include stroke and transient ischemic attack. You have peripheral artery, artery disease, disease and aortic uh, atherosclerosis. Other types include congestive heart failure, arrhythmias, valvular heart disease, aortic aneurysms, deep venous thrombosis. The causes of cardiovascular diseases include genetic problems, atherosclerosis, which is caused by plague, build up in arteries causing coronary artery disease or peripheral artery disease. Infections and rheumatic disease can cause valvular diseases. Aging is also a cause of cardiovascular disease. And some medications we take may cause arrhythmia. The risk factors for cardiovascular disease we have divided into two types, non-modifiable and modifiable risk factors. The non-modifiable ones include hypertension, type 2 diabetes, family history of heart disease, and chronic kidney failure. The modifiable ones include unhealthy diet, you can change it, tobacco use, you can stop it, lack of physical activity, you can decide to start doing exercise, diet rich in high sodium, you can decide to reduce sodium 
in your meal. Overdose of overuse of alcohol, high low density lipoprotein, drug abuse, obesity. These ones are the ones we can modify ourselves. The key facts about cardiovascular diseases is, is include the following one. It is the major, they are the leading cause of death globally. Cardiovascular diseases are the leading cause of death globally. In 2019, about 17.9 17 million people died from cardiovascular diseases globally. And 85% of this figure are deaths deaths were due to heart attack and stroke. Most of these deaths occur in low and medium income countries, which Nigeria belongs to one of them. Most cardiovascular diseases can be addressed simply by addressing the behavioral risk factors, such as tobacco use, unhealthy diet, obesity, physical inactivity, and so on. Now, the prevalence of cardiovascular disease is an estimated 1.2 billion adults aged between 30 to 79 years worldwide have hypertension. Because if you go back to, if you go back to the risk factors, the number one risk factor is hypertension. Almost all these things we are looking at, both the modifiable risk factors, are linked to hypertension. That's why we took special interest. About 1.28 billion adults aged 30 to 79 all over the world have hypertension and two thirds live in low and middle income countries. An estimated 46% of the adults with hypertension do not even know that they have hypertension. Some of us sitting here have hypertension, but do not even know that we have it. That is true. If they ask you, say, Sophia, well, I don't have it, but you've not visited your doctor, go and visit your doctor and check your blood pressure. Hypertension is a major cause of premature death worldwide, not just in Nigeria, in every part of the world. And in Africa, an estimated um, cumulative prevalence of 30.8% has been reported. In Nigeria, in a study done in 2010, 20.8 20 million cases of hypertension was reported. And they projected that this figure will increase to 39.1 in 2030. But you and me know that this cannot be true. In 2010, I think we were in heaven that time, considering the situation we find ourselves now in Nigeria. These 30 point, 39.1 they projected, I'm sure we have far exceeded this number in 2024. It, it, the economic hardship and the suffering, are, of course, we would have increased it even more than 50 million. So in Nigeria, the prevalence of hypertension of course, the prevalence of hypertension is higher among men than women. And I think all of us know the reason. Whatever is your reason, I concur. <laughs> and it is also reported that there is more hypertension among urban dwellers than rural people staying in rural areas. So if you want to retire and have very peaceful life, you find out that the rural area is the place for you to be. Your chances of having hypertension will be reduced. In a study done in three rural communities in Enugu here, I think in Oba, um, Obola for, and one other community, isolated systolic hypertension was found to be 10 to 6%. Diastolic hypertension, 18.2%, and combined systolic diastolic hypertension is 37.8%. Now, you find out that diastolic hypertension is more common compared to systolic uh, hypertension. And it's been also reported that Nigerians are susceptible to hypertension and its complications, such as fatal stroke remains a major cause of morbidity and mortality. 
we decided to focus our research on finding solutions that will assist in reducing the prevalence of hypertension in Nigeria, and more importantly, using our own God-given natural resources. It is important for us to know that it is only we that can solve our problems. No other person can solve your problem for you. It is you that will solve it. And that's why we decided to look around us and see those things we have that can assist us in solving this major problem. Our target was to look for products that will be effective, will be cheap and affordable, and will have few side effects. And we found solace in hibiscus sabdarifa. And hibiscus sabdarifa, a lot of research has been done on this plant. And concerning all the numerous ethno-medicinal uses, but the most one researched on is its antihypertensive um, uh, ability or properties. And some of the research or some of the findings include it, that the fact that it relaxes vascular smooth muscle as done by Adegunle et al. An IV injection of extract from HS calis was found to lower blood pressure in rats in a dose-dependent manner. Odege also induced a renovascular hypertension by doing uh, clamping the both renal arteries and one uh, renal artery and found out that the rat became hypertensive, then administered extract of HS and found out that it reduced both systolic and diastolic blood pressure. All the experiments, all the research done were done using animals. The first human study was reported in Mexico in 2004. It, uh, we therefore conducted the first clinical trial using HS in Nigeria and indeed Africa. We were the first to do the clinical trial using HS. And what we did, we used a similar dose as our locally prepared Zobo drink, which is about 150 milligram per kg. And this study was published in the American Journal of Phytomedicine and Clinical Therapeutics. Now, on, we, when we investigated this, we had two groups. We had those we gave once daily and those we gave twice daily. And incidentally, among those two groups, there was no side effect reported. Now, but the interesting thing is, those that were given once daily, the systolic blood pressure reduced by 11.4%. Against those that were given twice daily, that recorded only 6.9%. Those uh, uh, diastolic blood pressure reduced by 12.1% against those that received twice daily of 7.4% reduction in diastolic blood pressure. This is intriguing. That means that this hibiscus sazarifa or what we call Zobo, the effectiveness increases in the low dose. Because when we increase the dose, you find out that, uh, that the reduction reduced. So we concluded by observing that HS can effectively reduce blood pressure in mild to moderate hypertensive Nigeria. It's also important for us to know what we use was mild to moderate hypertensive Nigeria. And our result validates all the numerous animal anti-hypertensive studies that have been talked, you know, that have been earlier uh, done. Now, this finding, in addition to being locally available and cheap, and justifies its desirability as an alternative anti-hypertensive agent in mild to moderate hypertensive disorders. But we also advise that caution has, has to be applied, to be applied when, when taking it. it. Now, we looked at the effect of HS on 
blood pressure and serum electrolytes. And why we did that was because electrolytes have been implicated in the pathogenesis and maintenance of essential hypertension. And many people have done studies on that, and we investigated the effect of HS calis on both blood pressure and electrolyte profile of mild to moderate hypertensive soldiers and compared our results with hydrochlorothiazide, a standard antihypertensive drug. Hydrochlorothiazide is the one you call acidress. That result or that study was published in Nigerian Journal of Clinical Practice. And our results showed that both hydrochlorothiazide and HS significantly reduced blood pressure, systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure. And mean arterial blood pressure followed a similar pattern in both groups. The changes in serum electrolytes reverse to their normal volumes in both treatment groups after withdrawal of treatment. And we therefore concluded that if you look at the results we see, you find out that the reduction in systolic, diastolic for the HS group was small compared to the hydrochlorothiazide group. We therefore concluded that the HS extra was a more effective antihypertensive agent uh, than HTS and than hydrochlorothiazide in my to moderate hypertensive Nigerians. And it, that those treatments did not cause any electrolyte uh, imbalance. We equally HS showed we observed that after withdrawal of treatment for those taking hydrochlorothiazide their blood pressure returned back to normal after withdrawal of treatment. But for the, those in HS group, the reduction in blood pressure was sustained almost one week after withdrawal of treatment. We therefore say that HS showed longer duration of action after withdrawal of treatment compared to hydrochlorothiazide. And the reduction in serum Sodium ion observed may be another mechanism of action through which it exerts antihypertensive um, action. These are the results we got. And we will say that our study has shown that treatment with HS re not restored electrolyte balance in mild to moderate hypertensive subjects. Now, we went further because if you're talking about blood pressure, you find out that blood pressure can be regulated on short-term basis or long-term basis. The long-term regulation of uh, blood pressure is achieved in the kidney using what we call renin angiotensin aldosterone system. The, it is, um, the, that's the system that regulates blood pressure on long-term basis. And many hypotheses have been advanced to explain the possible mechanism of action of HLs. And since we know that the kidney is involved in regulation of electrolyte balance in the body, and any disease that affects this balance will lead to hypertension. We therefore investigated the effect of HS on the three basic components of the renin and geotensin aldosterone system. We looked at the plasma renin, we looked at serum and geotensin converting enzyme, and we looked at plasma aldosterone in mild to moderate essential hypertensive Nigerians. This, the result of this study was published in a very high impact factor journal Indian Journal of Pharmacology. And the result we got was that HS reduced significantly aldosterone, about 32% reduction in plasma aldosterone, and also decreased serum angiotensin converting enzyme by 6.7%, although non significantly. 
And HS treatment also caused a non-significant increase in plasma renin. And HS, we observed when we compared it with lisinopril. Lisinopril is an ACE inhibitor, well-known ACE inhibitor. We compared the actions and we found out that both of them reduce ACE and plasma aldosterone with equal efficacy. And we therefore concluded that HS extract reduced serum angiotensin converting enzyme and plasma aldosterone in mild to moderate hypertensive Nigerians. And these actions we observed may be due to the presence of anthocyanins, which is present in the HS extract. And it's important, just a very simple mechanism of action is shown there. When you reduce angiotensin converting enzyme, you find out that angiotensin converting enzyme is what converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. And angiotensin 2 is the active form. And we know that angiotensin 2 is a powerful vessel constrictor. So when you reduce its production, that means you're reducing vessel constriction. And when you reduce vessel constriction, that means total peripheral resistance will fall. And when there is a fall in total peripheral resistance, blood pressure will equally fall. It's important for us to know that there are basic two factors that control blood pressure. One is cardiac output and the other one is peripheral resistance. And that, that means angiotensin 2, apart from reducing total peripheral resistance, it is the hormone that stimulates the adrenal cortex to secrete aldosterone. And aldosterone is the major hormone that is involved in sodium reabsorption at the distal and, distal and collecting ducts of the kidney. When its production is reduced, that means sodium reabsorption is reduced. And that means urine output is increased and ECF volume is reduced. When you reduce ECF volume, the next thing that will happen is venous return will reduce. And when venous return is reduced, stroke volume will be reduced. And when stroke volume is reduced, cardiac output is reduced. When cardiac output is reduced, blood pressure is reduced. So these are the two mechanisms. <laughs> this is a diagram of the nephron. The nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. Everything you are talking about the kidney, this is the functional unit. That's where fluids are filtered in the glomerulus, moves through the renal tubules, reabsorption and secretion occurs, and the final output comes out as urine. So these are the results we got. Serum ACE, plasma aldosterone. Then we, the next thing we looked at, we have seen that HS has effect on renin angiotensin aldosterone by reducing ACE and plasma aldosterone. We decided to look at, since the kidney plays a major and central role in the long-term regulation of blood pressure, and since we are talking about helping people with hypertension, we decided to look at the effect of this on the functions of the kidney. And kidney, we must note, is one of the target organs of hypertension. And most drugs, many drugs we take, including the antihypertensive drugs, are eliminated totally or partially through the kidney. And in view of the recent increase in prevalence of renal failure, we investigated the effects of HS consumption on renal function in mild to moderate hypertensive Nigerians using indices of renal function such as urine volume and creatinine clearance. We compared our results with lisinopril, which is ACE inhibitor. This work was published in the Journal of Physiological Sciences, the Journal of Japanese Physiological Society. This journal has stayed over 200 years and has a very high impact factor. 
Now, we found out that both HS and lisinopril significantly increase urine volume compared to those the placebo. We have a third group which we gave placebo. Now, though the increase caused by HS was more than that of lisinopril, HS, that is the Zobo in your own language, increase creatinine clearance. Creatinine clearance is what we use to measure renal function. Compared to placebo, whereas the increase caused by lisinopril was not uh, significant. Our conclusion that these results indicate that HS conjunction improved indices of renal function in our study population of Nigerians with mild to moderate hypertension. You can see the urine volume. The green one line is that of HS. The blue one is the lysinopril, while the red one is the placebo. And this is the creatinine clearance. Now, all of us are thirsty, and I urge you to look into your bag. I'm sure there is Zobo there. Take one and quench your thirst. Please go to your bag, check your bag, you see Zobo. Take it and quench your thirst. Because that's the next thing we are going to look at. Now, one of the one of the traditional uses of Zobo was to quench test. When people are thirsty, they will drink. And what is test? Test results from stimulation of the osmo receptors in the lateral hypothalamus. When resulting from uh, increase in osmolarity of the ECM body. Once the osmolarity is increased, the osmo receptors in lateral hypothalamus are stimulated and they create this sensation of thirst. You feel the urge to drink. And if you feel the urge to drink, it is not a bad thing. What you should look for is how to quench your thirst. And in quenching your thirst, I recommend you drink Zobo now. Now, thirst is a subjective possession and it is important for maintenance of body fluid homeostasis. If you're thirsty, you cannot enjoy it. You must drink something to quench your thirst. We decided to investigate the effect of HS consumption on thirst perception of this mild to moderate hypertensive. And we used what we call the visual analog scale developed by Thompson et al. to do it. And this work was published in African Journal of Pharmacy and Pharmacology. And what we found out is that HS caused a, sig a significant reduction in test perception when compared to the control group. And we also found out that the serum sodium, and when we are talking about serum sodium, it is the major cation you find within the ECM. So it was reduced in the experimental group, that's those giving HS. And we drew the conclusion that it validates the traditional use. Since the test perception was reduced, this validates the traditional use of Zobo to quench test and also complement its anti-hypertensive action. So the ability to reduce serum sodium may also be another possible anti-hypertensive mechanism. So we see this is test perception measured using visual analog scale, and you can see what we recorded. Now, the next thing we did was to investigate the effect of HS on blood pressure, on heart rate, and antioxidant enzymes and we did a comparative study with captopril. Captopril is also a standard and ACE inhibitor. And our result was published in another impact factor journal called the Pharmacia Later. What we observed, we observed that H, uh, the extract significantly reduce blood pressure and heart rate in a dose-dependent manner. 
We also found out that this reduction, there was a reduction in serum lipid peroxidation product and increase in serum anti, uh, antioxidant enzyme activities. So the effect of, we use methanol at this time, what we used as the medium of extraction was methanol, not water. So um, we found out that this extract, on, the effect of the methanol extract on blood pressure and oxidative stress markers were similar when we compared it to the dose of uh, captopril. And we therefore concluded that the methanol extract of HS possessed significant anti-hypertensive anti effect against salt-induced hypertension in rats. But we use whistler rats as experimental animals. The anti-hypertensive effect appears to be mediated by a reduction in serum oxidative stress. And look at the results we got. The blue represent before the treatment and the red after the treatment. We have a control, we have a vehicle, the untreated uh, hypertensive group, the ones treated with captopril, those treated with different doses of uh, methanol extract. The dazazolic, these are results. These are all antioxidant enzyme activities which we found that increase. Now, we decided that since we've been using crude extract to do this, that remember we said that the bioactive compounds include anthocyanins, polysaccharides, flavonoids, and organic acid. We decided to go further to extract those active com you know, compounds. And the one we started with, which we implicated, that has effect on renin and jotensin adestron system. We decided to extract anthocyanins from HS and test it and find out the renin and jotensin adestron system. Since we used crude extract to establish our own um, uh, hypothesis. Now, what we found is that we gave a combination therapy. What we did, we have a group that we gave both anthocyanins and also captopril to see whether the combination therapy will be effective. What is it? Uh -uh. What have you done? Please, um, let's, um, what's the problem? Why will it? The results we found out are very um, interesting. We found out that anthocyanins save rats in a dose-deceive rats in a dose-dependent manner. We also found out that anthocyanins from HS, uh, captopril, which is an AC inhibitor, and both treatment exerted significant reduction in uh, blood pressure. In the, in the group that had combination therapy, we found out that serum ACE and plasma aldosterone. So if you are in your high biscuits. Noise payment were observed at doses of 1,000 milligram per kg. 1,000 milligram per kg. Mr. Vice Chancellor, fortunately, the one we are taking is just 150 milligram per kg. So we are good to go. Uh, impairment. This uh, sense. Now we let us also look at its effect on diabetes. 
Studies have shown that HS possesses both hypoglycemic and hypolipidemic uh, effects and improved lipid profile in patients that have metabolic disorders such as diabetes. In fact, some people demonstrated that in patients that are hypertensive patients that are with type 2 diabetes, they gave them HS twice daily and found out that it reduced blood pressure in those patients. Thus, HS will be beneficial or is beneficial to patients. And one other important thing is that consumption of HS will reduce the chances of someone being hypertensive at all. Even a normal patient, a normal subject being hypertensive, shown that it reduces or attenuates postprandial glucose level in healthy subjects via inhibition of alpha glucosidase enzyme activity. Thus, HS consumption reduces the risk of increase in blood glucose level. So you don't need to be diabetic, but you can prevent it by consumption of uh, HS. On gastric ulcer, studies have equally shown that HS protects gastric mucosa by increasing gastric mucose secretion and also reducing gastric agents or you induce gastric also using um, indomatacin. Whichever model you see has been found that they will increase mucose, uh, gastric mucose secretion because that mucose is what protects the wall of the mucosa and also reduce the gastric acid secretion in all these models. On blood, it has been found out that HS extract, uh, extract from HS can safely be used to treat anemia. Some people use it to treat anemia. It's been found to increase red blood cell count, increase hemoglobin level, packed cell volume, reduce white blood cell count, and reduce even platelet count, though in non-significant manner. This was a study shown at pregnant women. So if a woman is pregnant and is taking hibiscus salve, imagine. We also found out that a combination therapy, if you're using it in combination therapy with your usual antihypertensive drug, you have to monitor your blood pressure effectively. Monitor it carefully so that it doesn't fall too low. Now, the other thing is that will disturb this marriage is physical inactivity. Many of us are guilty of this. Many of us do not do any exercise. You don't even take a walk. You don't do anything. You just, from your office, from your air-conditioned office, back to your air-conditioned uh, house, or air-conditioned car, and back to your air-conditioned house. You don't do any exercise. That will reduce the effectiveness of HS and therefore will reduce that marriage that we, have, we are talking about. Now, if you decide, if you are the type that takes a lot of salt, if you want to eat food, you add so much salt, know that you risk being hypertensive. So high fat or sodium diet will definitely reduce the effectiveness of uh, um, uh, HS on the cardiovascular system. So we advocate lifestyle modification and dietary modification. Many of us are found, uh, fond of eating joints. We eat joints, you keep on eating uh, every time. You don't settle down to eat normal or proper food that will nourish because good diet will nourish the heart. And that good diet goes with good drink. And that good drink is High viscous subdarifa. Now we equally have to be careful because what I've seen, what I've seen these days, so many people are doing zobo. And those people doing Zobo, many of them have different mixtures. 
mixed us, they mix pineapple, mix all the bobo tibo is mixed, and they say is zobo. They are just using zobo as a marketing strategy. But what we are consuming is not really the zobo I am talking about. Because when you mix it, so in conclusion, our studies has confirmed the ethnos medicinal uses of hibiscus sardarifa as an antihypertensive agent, both in animal and human studies. It is on record that we I conducted the first equipment and funding required for the isolation of these. We are calling on relevant agencies of government to increase funding for these scientific uh, uh, endeavors. I also recommend that industrialists and investors should support large-scale production of HS beef ranges and its distribution to even rural Nigeria. The raw materials are there. It's just HS calices and water. They are cheap. You can go to market, buy it, and water is there, and you're good to go. You will make your own HS. Boil water, put it, you know, you sieve, filter it, and drink. But I must warn, it has a sour taste. You have to take it that way. So it's, and if they do so, if we do such industrial products, just like it's done in China, Indonesia, and several other countries, it will create jobs for many Nigerian youths who are involved, who will be involved in marketing of these uh, products. Future research. Now, we have done on the anti hypersensitive and if you notice recently, okay, if you notice recently, there is increase in prevalence of diabetes in Nigeria. It's been on the increase. And we intend to focus our research efforts on the anti-diabetic potential of hibiscus sabdarifa, the blood glucose lowering potential. That's the next line of research we intend to go to see how it's going to be beneficial to diabetic uh, patients. Because we know the cost of anti-diabetic -di drugs is quite expensive and many of them have serious attendant side effects. Appreciation. I want to appreciate the almighty God for his love and mercy towards me. His grace saw me through and made something out of nothing for me, from me. I was nothing, but he made something from me. I will always stand on the Christ, the solid rock, and I want the, the music department to give me this theme, and I want us to help me to sing this song. And I will always give I will always stand on Christ the solid rock and give, always give honor to our mother of perpetual health. And with this sense of humility, I appreciate our amiable and indefatigable vice chancellor who is seated here, Professor Charles Arize Tukwibwe. Watching a mellow. For finding me worthy and giving me the opportunity to serve our great university in my present capacity as the Deputy Vice Chancellor, UNIC. I am truly grateful, sir. May the good Lord continue to bless and keep you. 
I thank immensely Professor B.C. Uzumba, the 14th Vice Chancellor. I uh, was expecting to see him. He said he'll be coming. <laughs> Please, can we clap for him? Can we clap for him? Loy Okolie, the Vice Chancellor, Enugu State University of Science and Technology. <laughs> Who is unavoidably absent. Um, I also, to my loving, beautiful, elegant, hardworking, supportive, charming. Where is she? In an adventure, I, you know, they say the journey into man who starts when you get married. You cannot confidently say you're a man until you get married. I want to say that I am favored by God, and I want to appreciate my wife for all she, do, she is doing for me and the family, for her support. <laughs> Behind every successful man, there is what? A woman. She has been, she has been the rock that I am standing on. She has been very supportive. And she has always been then. I will always love you. And I don't mind. My Iwe is here. I don't mind if Ogidi people say we should come and pay twice. I, I, I don't mind. We will go and pay two times. I appreciate in a very special way uh, my own children. Zimuzo, Jachima, and Chizitelo for their understanding and support and prayers. It's not easy having two parents that are very, very active. Uh, so they have been very supportive. They can cope, and I want to thank them. I also, in a very special way, want to thank my late father, Mr. Joseph Mwachuku Okora, for all his sacrifices he made for me. My mother, Mrs. Hana Mwachuku, whose love and care gave me hope, and she remains my backbone today. I appreciate my elder brothers, Pastor Simon, I think he's here. Pastor Simon, please, can you give a wave? <laughs> and Engineer Chuzi, who is unavoidably absent. And my sisters, Oyebuchi, Mary, and Obune, for their support and prayers. I, this is when we got married, and you can see, when we were still, you know, and this is a family picture. That's my son and I, uh, my wife and I, my first daughter, my children, my last daughter. That's my mom and my elder brother there. And that's my father-in-law. I want to specially thank him, my late father-in-law, Chief Frank Ebunobi, the Orimili one of Ogidi, the Orimili one of Ogidi, Ochen the one of Idemili, North and South. And my mother-in-law, Chief Mrs. Remy Ebunobi. She's here. Mommy. Please, a wave, a wave, please. Okay. I also want to thank my sister-in-laws, Mrs. Lillian Edo. Lillian Edo is here. I saw her from Abuja. She flew from Abuja. Yeah. Thank you. Mrs. Susan Najofo, please a wave. Give us a wave there. Susan Najofo. Mrs. Patricia Nyekwena. Mrs. Auche Olaito. Mrs. Obianuji Mwadigo. Chief Obiora Ebunobi, I think I saw Obiora. Obiora, are you there? Obiora. And Chief Tony Najofo. Chief Tony Najofo is here, I'm sure. Chief Patrick Anyebwena. I saw Patrick from all the way from US. Patrick. Pastor Lastman, or Lighter, Mr. Young Wadigo, Chief Ike Chuku Ebunobi, and Chief Chukudi Ebunobi. All these are Ebunobi families. 
I want to thank my colleagues, David C. Admin, uh, Chief Professor Roman Uzez Okompo, uh, David C. Academics, who is here live, Professor Johnson Orama, other principal officers, the registrar, Dr. Selin Nevedum, is here. The BOSA is unavoidably absent, and the university librarian, too. I want to thank them for their support and teamwork. I want to say that this is the best team I've seen in the university. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I think you are very lucky to assemble these great men and women. This is the best team we have. I also appreciate the Provost College of Medicine, Professor Hygiene, who says we, the Provost College of Postgraduate Studies, Professor Binjoko, deans of faculty and directors of institutes and center. The Chief Medical Director, UNTH, Professor Obinna Onodugo, ably represented by the CMAC, Professor Joy Eze. I saw her, is she here? Professor Joy Eze, CMAC. Okay, she's there. And the Chief Medical Director of National Orthopedic Hospital, Enugu, Professor Emmanuel E. Dobi. Is he here? He said he will be here. Incidentally, he was one of my PhD students. And um, I want to thank all of you for making our time to be here. I strongly appreciate the following elders of the courage, Emeritus Venerable Professor N.S. Omar Sibwe, Professor M.S.C. Ayaji, Emeritus Professor Rich Ume, who is here, late Professor Aloy Ayaji, Professor B.J.C. Omubere, Professor Basile Ezanolue, Prof I saw him, he's here, Professor Anthony Ikefuna, Professor P.O.J. Obunude, Professor F.E.A. Jeze, Professor A.U. Kachi, all of them are here, Professor U.I. Mwaga, Professor Ezebui, Professor Ozo Chuku, o Professor Obi Nomujewe, Professor Ejim, Ogandi Oga, Professor Ejim, where is he? I think I saw him. So, yeah, okay, that's it. And my gratitude also goes to other senior colleagues in the university, Professor Emmanuel Ezan, Professor Anene Moneke, Professor Binjoko, Professor Fefule, Professor Jumo, Professor Stella Mwizu, Professor Gono Obidike, Professor PJ Eze, Professor Fuebe, Professor Atama, Abada, and so on, and many others. Professor Nyechi. In a very, uh, vi Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, in a very special way, I want to thank the traditional ruler of my community for coming with his Council of Chiefs, my, His Royal Majesty, Onyeba Chukwab, the ordainable one of Opposite who is here. The traditional Prime Minister, Professor Dan Eji, I think he's unavoidably absent. The ASS cabinet, all of them are here. We also, I also appreciate the, the President General for also Development Union and the oldest man in my family, Umoko family, Professor O.O. Eji, is here. The gentleman is here. I also want to thank uh, Dr. Arvin Eji, late Dr. Igwa Jamachuku, former Minister of Education, Chief Henry Ude, the Omero and one of all OSE for, the providing, for the providing purposeful and sound leadership to my community. I also want to extend my thanks to all the professors from all OSE who are here. Many of them are here in their numbers. And I want to thank the Chief Executive of Roban Stores, who is, uh, does, um, Sir Robert M. for making out, I think he should be here. And I want to thank my staff, ably led by Prof, uh, Barrister Edith Chu Kaudenibu, the staff of Dean's Office, Faculty of Basic Medical Science, and those in the Department of Physiology. It's been wonderful working with all of you. And I want to thank the president of Student Union, great Nigerian students. I want to thank all of you for maintaining peace 
and security in the campus and working harmoniously with me to maintain that peace and security in the campus. I also want to appreciate my former parish priest who is here, uh, Reverend Father Callistus Ani. He's here, seated. Father, can we see you wave your hand? And also the parish priest or the chaplain in charge of our chaplaincy, St. Mulumba Chaplaincy. Reverend Father John Madubuko, please, Father, can we see? I like was to appreciate my group of friends who came together. When they asked me, where is your LOC? I said, no, they said, no, they came together to put up this event and to ensure that whatever we are witnessing today is a success. I want, I want to thank Professor Obi Okoye. Obi Okoye is the leader of that team. Professor Antonia Chimoba is there, Professor Leo Aja, Dr. Ngozi Dim, Reverend Sister Dr. Stella Omubiko, Dr. Ike Okweseli, Barista Eddie Chuko, Denibo, Dr. Chris Anerobi, Dr. Lilian Okwesi, Adobe, Dr. Joby Joe Mado, Dr. Ngozi Uzawa, Dr. Nkechi Egente, Barista Ifi Mwokike, Dr. Nyebuchi Oku, Dr. Nora Njeze, Dr. Obiora Madi, Dr. Kachi Ogwa, Dr. Nandi Ezigwore, Dr. Chukunonso Ogono, Dr. Wuna Wachuku, Dr. Madukanweke, Dr. Nabo, and the ICT team, ably read by Engineer Chima Ilo. I want to thank all of you. And lastly, I want to thank my friends in UK, in USA, and Canada. I believe most of them have joined us online. They are watching this program now. Thank you. I want to thank all of you for joining us and thank you for the massive support you've given to me. I want to thank all of you for listening. God bless all of you for coming. Thank you very much. very much please um, you want to give the applause while standing or do you want to give it after you sat down thank you now you may you may be seated uh, thank you very much um, thank you may I invite the chairman the vice chancellor um, to please give um, the post lecture comments and right after that he would make um, some presentations to the inaugural lecturer on behalf of the University of Nigeria the vice chancellor sir Once again, uh, Principal Officers of the University of Nigeria, Vice Chancellor Emeritus, who is here, body and soul present. Thank you for coming. And uh, thank you for still associating with us. That shows that um, the body is one. I want to rest on the existing protocols. Great lions and lionesses, ladies and gentlemen, you will agree with me that um, Professor Dan Wachuku has given us a very good inaugural lecture this afternoon. His lecture is both academic and economic. Why did I say, when well, we've learned, uh, I, looked at your, I looked at all your sciences, all your equation, all your enzymes, and um, you know, those things that made some of us you know, run away from anything biological, and all the complicated issues with the tissues and with all the ca cardiovascular this and that. I listened to them attentively, but all I learned, and I believe that 
you all also learned that instead of some of these things we keep on our, on our table during meals, that we can now start keeping Zobu. <laughs> personally, personally, this is the first time I will test Zobu because I've been running away. Because I've been running away from it because I know, I looked at the plant, I know what the plant is, the hibiscus uh, S. And uh, I thought it was a very dangerous thing. But I see people, like he said, mixing sugar, saccharin, pineapple, this and that, and uh, serving them. But now I will start, uh, I will start taking Zobo. <laughs> and economic in the sense, economic in the sense that what we think of building our economy, expanding our economy, that we can also begin to incorporate production of Zobo in some of these areas where we manufacture pure water and uh, provided it is done in a very, very hygienic, you know, very scientific way, that we can start incorporating Zobo production into that. Remember some companies, these uh, uh, mineral water companies also incorporate water, pure water aspect in their, in their, in their, in their production line. So we can also start now incorporating production of Zobo in our production line of Lion Water. I can see Ichie Professor Awo listening very attentively. So Ichie Professor Awo, this is a money-making venture for us to, at least it will now start happening in our IGR. So uh, Professor Dan Wachuku, I want to thank you for a very good lecture and for expanding our scope on the utilization of uh, Zobo plant. So thank you for, thank you for, for your lecture. But as it is traditional in this kind of lecture, that we present certificate, that you will always uh, tell friends that uh, on this day of uh, 7th, uh, 7th March 2000 and, uh, 2024, that you presented an inaugural lecture to university community and a certificate is being presented to you. This certificate has both your name, your department, and the topic of your lecture. So congratulations. Thank you, sir. And again, we want to see maybe your office or somewhere in your sitting room this plaque being placed to show that you've delivered inaugural lecture of the University of Nigeria. And that you were the 201st inaugural lecturer of the, of the university. Congratulations once again. Press, don't, don't, don't worry. He's uh, doubling as photographer and, uh, and uh, official aide. I also want to know, seeing the kind, of, the kind of audience you have here today, it has shown that you are a man of the community, that you are a public person, <laughs> that you are not only known, only here at the University of Nigeria, that you are also known in your community, opposite. I want to, on behalf of the Senior Ceremonials Committee, present these copies of your lecture to you so that you can start giving some of the people who, who couldn't appear today or who couldn't attend this uh, inaugural lecture. So once again, congratulations and may God continue to bless all of us. And remember my initial, my initial you know, uh, I, I tried to, initially I tried to encourage those who have not presented their inaugural lecture to come up and take a date. There is nothing, there is nothing that will make you, there is nothing that will make you not to present your inaugural. I was one of the people, one of the people that refused to, you know, deliver an inaugural lecture until my then boss, my then boss now, the day he discovered that I was, uh, I was, uh, that's the way they call it in Igbo land. That's where you've not entered the masquerade. 
And he said, and you tell us that you are a professor. Go and, go and take a date. And uh, in spite of all the work I was doing that time, I wrote my inaugural lecture sitting on the back of the, of the car, going either traveling to Abuja or traveling to one, time, one place or the other to write my inaugural lecture. And I owe that to my then boss, the 14th uh, Vice Chancellor of the University of Nigeria, who also encouraged me to take, uh, to present my inaugural lecture. So I am now encouraging all of us, all of you here who have not presented your inaugural lecture to take up dates and present your inaugural lecture. Thank you for coming and may God continue to bless all of us in Jesus' name. Well, thank you, uh, Chairman. Thank you very much for making the presentation on behalf of the committee and for giving um, a very interesting summary of um, that lecture. Thank you uh, very, very much. Uh, we should ideally do additional recognitions at this point, but as um, uh, you don't begrudge him, he has done so much for the committee. He sacrificed the most to make sure the inaugural lectures um, take place as, as they ought to, and so um, it's his day and nothing is going to uh, subtract for that. But I, I do apologize for those who haven't been recognized individually, particularly those who feel sensitive about it. But we'll take care, make, um, sorry. Um, I'd like to, um, I insist, um, Professor Onyeshi, please, can you stand for recognition? I insist. Um, Professor Onyeshi, please, can you stand for recognition? And the topic of that lecture is not my job syndrome, getting workers to go the extra mile in a challenging work environment. How do you get workers to go the extra mile when, okay, let's go and hear that day. How are you going to get workers at a time like this? How do you get me to go the extra mile at a time when it's near impossible to even get home from Nkemgaraga? But let's see how it goes. And that lecture is on Thursday, the 14th of March, 2024, at uh, the Princess Alexandria Auditorium at Unity Hall, uh, University of Nigeria, uh, and Sukkah Campus. So I expect that you'll all be there. And wait for this, another very interesting announcement. On Thursday, March the 21st, that's exactly one week after Professor Onyeshi's inaugural lecture, we'll be holding a validatory lecture in honor of the 14th Vice Chancellor of the University of Nigeria, Professor Benjamin Chukuma Ozumba. Um, he has chosen an equally interesting topic, and that is the role of tertiary education in national development. My experience at the University of Nigeria, to hall, and you know why, I'm sure you know why it's not taking place here. It is a special day that will be dedicated to the 14th Vice Chancellor of the University. So his lecture, which holds at 1 p.m., will be preceded by a guest lecture to be presented by the Registrar of the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, JAMB, Professor Ishak Oloyade. So make it a date, um, 21st of March, for the validatory lecture to be presented by our own Professor Uzumba, the 14th Vice Chancellor. I make it edit as well, 14th of March, for the 202nd inaugural lecture of the university to be presented by the Dean of the Faculty of the Social Sciences, Professor Ike Onishi. And the order of refreshment, um, the 201st inaugural lecturer, the DVC Enugu Campus, thank you very much. And along that side, I want to thank everyone who has made this a worthwhile inaugural lecture for Professor Dan Mwachuku. He is truly a man of the people. And I say that because I've been at the receiving end of his hospitality. He goes the extra mile to make sure that my committee and I are treated uh, with utmost hospitality whenever we're here. He tempts us to sleep over but we tell him that there is job to be done at the other end. And so we, we, we thank you personally for that. And I thank everyone as the vice and so on. Um, I'm in a privileged position to know what the vice 
and then the principal officers who had to be here because the vice chancellor uh, was coming, they did the, the tedious journey here and they will be going back to Nsuka today. The DVC academic, the registrar, we thank you um, very, very seriously. I want to also thank the DVC administration who I know has been following this on Zoom and I said if he logged off before the end of lecture, I would not acknowledge his uh, presence. So please an applause for Professor Romano Sezo Konko who, who is still connected uh, and via Zoom. And the 14th Vice Chancellor of the University of Nigeria. Um, I think you have a bias for presentations from the Faculty of Medicine, and I know why. But it's always a pleasure to have you in the house, sir. Huh? It's always a pleasure to have you. Um, and maybe I should say this, as you retire, sir, May you retain this interest in the inaugurals and in all the other affairs of the University of Nigeria. Thank you. So in the same vein, I want to thank um, the big caps on this side, the past inaugural lecturers um, who have come to enrich this, um, this stage, this table. When I came in this morning, the first thing I did was to come and check the number of seats they put up there because I had this feeling that it was going to be busy, and um, they did not disappoint me. Um, if you have the privilege of standing here, you would see that you see the mirage, you, you see the rainbow that the different gowns have formed here. It is a beauty to behold. This, this cameraman, you don't even know what to capture. You're taking the same faces. This is this is where the beauty is. Please come here and take a cross section. Take it from the other side. There are the ladies. There are the gentlemen. Their caps are different, and they tell the story. By their presence and that of other robed academics, they add this color, they add this, they add this candle to the affairs of the day. They bring authority, they bring credibility, they bring everything that an inaugural lecture of Nigeria's first university ought to be like. And this is one of those days when, when I feel very delighted and I thank everyone too who has met it. Um, the people that came from Obosi, the Obosi people, Thanks also for making the journey to come and see um, your son do a public dance. This is an academic dance, and I'm sure he didn't disappoint. Um, I noticed that the loudest applause came from that side, and I also know why. Um, you should keep the best uh, for yourselves. Uh, thank you for coming. You also look colorful and distinguished in your red caps. And so um, as you make the journey back home, please say us well to those at home and take our best wishes, uh, take our best wishes to them. Um, the inaugural lecturer did mention friends from the UK, from the United States, those who are here physically, and those who have joined via Zoom. We thank you also for giving us this day, because it's, it's been a very long day. There are other distinguished academics that came from Nsuka to support the DVC academic, and I want to single them out for appreciation. Um, the journey from Nsuka to Enugu is one you should undertake when you feel a sense of commitment, and that will always be the the second stanza. So for the closing prayer is my, 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 my apologies. Reverend, Fa Jude. Jude. Reverend Father John Madubuko, I stand corrected. Thank you very much. If you rise, we pray. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end amen heavenly father thank you for this wonderful day thank you for our inaugural lecturer our dvc thank you for all the principal staff of the university thank you for all who have come to witness this harvest of knowledge thank you for enriching us from within and from without and even giving us what nature has provided as a means of sustenance through knowledge. As we go home, lead us safely to our various destinations to continue to bless you in our work and even in our leisure, in our families and in our lecture places and places of work to the glory of your name, our joy and salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you. You want to write? National Anthem, second stanza only.
maintain our standing position as we allow the members of the high table recess the hall first. Maintain your standing position and allow the members of the high table recess the hall. I want to use this medium to say a very big thank you to my colleague in the public relations unit and also the DVC's office. We are all looking colorful. Thank you for making today.